Week 1 draws closer and closer, yet several loose threads still remain on the market. The question is now, where will they end up? The top player on this list, Richard Sherman, and I think it's a bit of a surprise that Sherman at this point remains unsigned. A handful of household names remain available in the NFL free agent market. With week one drawing closer, most of these players can expect to find new teams very soon. Here's a dive into where the top 10 remaining NFL free agents should sign. Richard Sherman to the Dallas Cowboys. It's unclear when Sherman will return to the football field following several off the field problems in July. Obviously, his own well being is the first priority here. And once he's ready, there should be plenty of interest in the future Hall of Fame. It's hard to think of a better fit for Sherman than the Dallas. Dallas Cowboys. For one, this is a team with a pressing need at cornerback. And secondly, new Cowboys defensive coordinator Dan Quinn just so happened to be the DC of the Seahawks during the height of the Legion of Boom era. You know, when they won Super Bowl 48 and got back to the big game the following year? The Cowboys front seven, which was bolstered by the drafting of Micah Parsons, has immense potential. But the secondary is loaded with question mark. What if Trayvon Diggs doesn't make strides in year two? He already has a ring, but you have to think Sherman will prioritize playing for a contender overtaking the biggest payday. I mean, the Cowboys, dare we say, should be in the running with a rebuilt defense and a healthy Dak Prescott. Sherman is the ideal pickup for the Cowboys. He may be past his prime, but the guy can still ball. He would instantly fix a secondary that just needs that one final piece. Mitchell Schwartz to the Cincinnati Bengals. A back injury forced Schwartz to miss the end of the regular season and the playoffs. The Kansas City Chiefs O-line fell apart entirely without him and Eric Fisher in their Super Bowl 55 blowout loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Chiefs opted to release Schwartz and Fisher in cap-saving moves before they paid big bucks for free agent Joe Tooney and traded for Orlando Brown Jr. Despite Schwartz's track record and reliability, the former All-Pro remains a free agent with the regular season drawing closer. And there are several teams who have a glaring hole out of offensive tackle. The Cincinnati Bengals didn't do a whole lot to address their woeful O-line for Joe Burrow during the offseason. Rookie guard Jackson Carmen has some work to do. Jonah Williams is the only piece on that line that should make Burrow feel somewhat comfortable. If you're the Bengals, you can't put a price on solid pass protection for your young franchise QB. At this point, shorts should come very cheap. And even if he is past his prime, he's at least an upgrade over just about anyone the Bengals have put on their O-line in recent years. Not to mention that Schwartz would serve as a great mentor to Williams and Carmen. Now Sean Jeffrey to the New Orleans Saints. The Capstrap Saints had to say goodbye to a pair of productive pass catchers in Jared Cook and Emmanuel Sanders. Superstar Michael Thomas will also miss several weeks of action. So yeah, the Saints receiving depth chart is uh, pretty thin right now. As of now, Marcus Callaway and Traquan Smith are atop the receiver depth chart. The Saints may as well dip their feet in the bargain bin where they'll find former Chicago Bears and Philadelphia Eagles wideout Alshon Jeffrey. The Super Bowl 53 champion remains unsigned following another injury-riddled season that saw him appear in just seven games. Jeffrey has only suited up for 30 contests over the last three years, and though he's not a Pro Bowl talent anymore, he can only help a weakened New Orleans receiving core. Jeffrey's big frame helps him win those 50-50 balls that Jameis Winston loves to throw. They would form an intriguing duo. And who knows, maybe a healthy Jeffrey does have another 1,000-yard season left in him. New Orleans doesn't have the money to make a big splash for a pricey receiver. May as well take a chance on Jeffrey and see if he has anything else to offer at this stage of his career, right? Honestly, they have absolutely nothing to lose. KJ Wright to the Miami Dolphins. Kind of surprising to see the longtime Seahawk remain unsigned up to this point as the regular season draws closer. Wright is a classic example of how stats don't tell the story. He's quietly been one of the NFL's premier linebackers in coverage for a while now. It's obviously hard to stand out at the position when you line up beside future Hall of Famer Bobby Wagner, we suppose. Wright is a force all over the field. He's usually good for 100 plus tackles a season, and he's racked up 21 passes defended over the last two years. That's somebody the Miami Dolphins could certainly use. 
Miami had the sixth best scoring defense last season, but upgrades in the linebacker department are necessary. Jerome Baker has shown signs of future stardom, but there's question marks across the rest of the board. Wright's skill set, experience, and leadership abilities would make him a nice fit for Brian Flores and company. Miami is a young team on the rise, and adding a Super Bowl champion would go a long way in trying to establish that winning culture. Austin Ryder to the Pittsburgh Steelers Schwartz and Fisher weren't the only starters on the Chiefs O-line to depart this offseason. KC also decided not to bring back serviceable veteran center Austin Ryder, who quietly had a dominant 2020 season. Ryder didn't allow a single sack last year, and PFF graded him at a respectable 70.9 overall. He's been mostly durable as well. The Steelers should be on this ASAP. They lost nine-time Pro Bowl center Marquise Ponce to retirement, and they also parted ways with Alejandro Villanueva and David DeCastro. This O-line really needs some upgrades before it's too late. Right now, rookie Kendrick Green, whom Pittsburgh drafted in the third round, is penciled in as the starting center. But if you're the Steelers, why not upgrade this super important position? Especially with an aging quarterback in Roethlisberger and promising rookie running back Najee Harris to accommodate. Ryder alone would be a game changer on that usually dominant Pittsburgh O-line that will otherwise see massive regression this year. The Steelers patiently waited out the market and got Melvin Ingram and Joe Schobert on bargain deals via free agency and trade, respectively. Now's the time for GM Kevin Colbert to add another cheap free agent gem and Ryder. Russell Okun to the New York Giants one of the NFL's more underrated players of the past decade, Okun remains an above-average starter even in his mid-30s. The two-time Pro Bowl tackle, who won a Super Bowl 48 ring with Seattle, was limited to seven games with the Carolina Panthers last year. He still fared decently with a 73.0 grade from PFF, though Okun did allow a trio of sacks and 406 snaps. The New York Giants have a gaping need at offensive tackle. This is arguably the worst O-line in the league and the front office didn't do much to fix it. Sure, they got Nate Solder back after he opted out of last season, but his first two seasons as a giant left a lot to be desired. Okung would be an immediate upgrade over New York's other tackles, especially if sophomore Andrew Thomas can't bounce back following a rough rookie year. The Giants invested so much in upgrading the supporting cast for Daniel Jones, but the pass protection remains a giant concern. May as well add a player like Okung on the cheap with the regular season looming. It doesn't hurt to have a well-established veteran like him to help out. Everson Griffin to the Tennessee Titans. The Cowboys signed Griffin late last year, but the former Minnesota Vikings stalwart just couldn't get it going in Big D. He finished with just 2.5 sacks in 7 games, but he was slightly better following a trade to the Detroit Lions. Griffin finished with 6 sacks in 14 games last season, not a huge drop from the 8 he put up in 2019 when he earned his 4th Pro Bowl nod. The guy can still play, he just needs to be in the right system. The Titans only recorded 19 sacks last season despite winning the AFC South. They signed Bud Dupree in free agency, but he alone isn't going to turn that front seven around. Tennessee shouldn't hesitate to land at least one more veteran pass rusher before week one, and Griffin fits the bill here. Suddenly, you'd have Griffin and Dupree rounding out your pass rush. That would help Tennessee get one step closer to contending with the top dogs in the AFC. Geno Atkins to the Seattle Seahawks the likely future Hall of Fame defensive tackle was released by the Cincinnati Bengals earlier this offseason. Matkins recorded zero sacks and eight appearances last year, and he only had 4.5 in 2019. In other words, the eight-time Pro Bowler is no longer a game-wrecking force. But Atkins can still play, and the man could be a difference maker provided he finds the right fit. The Seahawks have a quality history of getting the most out of expensive veterans who are seemingly past their primes. Carlos Dunlap, Atkins' longtime teammate, was a beast for the Seahawks last season when he came over via trade. If you're Pete Carroll and John Schneider, why not explore the idea of reuniting the two? The pass rush is a major weakness on the Seattle defense. Dunlap greatly improved it last year. Maybe Atkins can do the same. I mean, the Seahawks don't have much to risk in taking a chance on him. And plus, he'd come super for cheap at this point. Le'Veon Bell to the Atlanta Falcons After he was mercilessly released by the dysfunctional New York Jets, Bell had the prime opportunity to rebuild his value with the Chiefs. Andy Reid and company brought in Bell to help the Patrick Mahomes-led offense, but his production was meh. 
In nine games, Bell recorded just 353 yards of offense and two total touchdowns. Rookie Clyde Edwards Alaire was simply the better back, and KC predictably let Bell walk in free agency. Is Bell washed up? Maybe, maybe not. His days as a Bell Cow backer are obviously done. But maybe he could flourish as an RB2 or in a running back by committee of some sort. For Bell, the best destination may be the Atlanta Falcons. New head coach Arthur Smith was Tennessee Titans offensive coordinator during Derrick Henry's monster 2019 and 2020 seasons. Smith largely won the job because he saved the career of Ryan Tannehill. Now they're asking him to help Matt Ryan regain that MVP form. Given Smith's impressive resume, who's to doubt his ability to make Bell a productive running back again? Sure, they have Mike Davis, who was a beast for the Panthers last year in Christian McCaffrey's absence, but Bell could still be a useful pass-catching back for Matt the ice in short yardage situations. And he can do a lot of damage in the red zone. Not saying Bell will be a pro bowler again if he joins Atlanta, but surely this offensive-minded Smith and the Falcons' explosive offense would make it work with Bell. It doesn't hurt to see what he can offer you. Golden Tate to the Kansas City Chiefs. The speedy Tate wasn't a fit for the New York Giants, but it wasn't on him. Hard to produce when your quarterback struggles to protect the ball time and time again. Sorry, Daniel Jones, but it's true. Tate could still make the big play here and there on a dismal Giants offense. Now, imagine if the former Seahawk and Detroit Lions star got to join an elite offense again. As it turns out, the Kansas City Chiefs could really use another trustworthy wideout on their otherwise flawless offense. Patrick Mahomes has the game's best tight end in Travis Kelsey, and a world-class playmaker in Tyreek Hill. But with Sammy Watkins leaving in free agency, the Chiefs need another wideout. If third year product McCole Hardman doesn't break out, well, as we saw in their Super Bowl loss, it becomes a lot easier for opposing defenses when you can focus solely on shutting down a Hill and Kelsey. Tate will just add another element to this KC offense. He can work the slot and extend the chains on third down, and he would help stretch the field with Hill. The dude has averaged 11.9 yards per catch in his career. Maybe it's just us, but Tate to Kansas City feels like a great A fit. But where do you think the top remaining free agents of 2021 should sign? Join us in the comments section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.